simple via uh, two options. Number one is you use your browser, web browser. So regardless of what computing, like using Mac, PC, or uh, from, for example, you can still access Spectrum by going through your browser. And the second one is by which you can download a Moodle app. As I mentioned previously, Spectrum is based on Moodle. So if you go to uh, Google Store or App Store, you should be able to uh, search for Moodle and they can download it and get free from that. Okay. Especially for students, if um, at least during last semester, I've seen that most of my students for the like half of the class are actually using Moodle's for the test. So thanks to the Google Moodle app, um, I do not get any money from this. You can just promote to your students, you can download Moodle and then you can straight away access um, your spectrum information and whatnot. That's straight away very easy without going to uh, web time. Okay. So we're going to um, look at Moodle first and like a very basic discussion about the Moodle app and then we're going to go through navigation uh, on browser. Okay, so if you download the Moodle app, this is how it will look like. Okay, so it will say there on top of that basically it says your site. So, what you need to instruct your students for if you are interested in using this uh, app as well, what you need to do is you just go and write down um, our own spectrum name, which is spectrum where you have a find. So, basically, you just go and type it in, and then you get the list of this. You can see there's a lot of um, universities using uh, the platform as part of their uh, LMS learning management system. Okay? So, you type it in, and then uh, normally you have spectrum with will not be listed, but at least on top of that, you can say connect to your site. So if you click on connect to your site, what you'll see is you will be, uh, there will be a pop-up asking uh, you guys to log in, you and your students to log in, so you just log in as usual. For Spectrum now, it's going to change to your username at 365, but you guys are to do we need to have a 365 because we are still moving from uh, Google Base to more on uh, Microsoft. Okay. So once you have login, this is what you will see. You will go and load and pretty much you will see everything that should be displayed on the spectrum. Okay, so it's very, very nice introduction and whatnot. And um, let's switch it a little bit. Okay. And you do have a few options um, to see all the courses. So if you scroll down at the very bottom, there's my courses over there. If you click on, on that thing, so you will see all the courses. This is an example of my own. Uh, Moodle app, and when I'm logging, this is what I see. Okay, so I will see um, e-learning week 2019, a long time ago, um, Emerald teaching and learning, which I invite everyone to go. Okay, if you want to be that or whatnot, you definitely need to attend um, Emerald teaching and learning. Um, and all the other courses, and you can see over there, as you see, 7204, which is one of the uh, master courses that I teach. So everything is there. But in mind, there's only one limitation on using a Moodle app, which is as a teacher, you cannot update uh, anything. So it's not really uh, something. It's good for you guys to access everything. So, say for example, you have all the lecture notes, right? And then you have uploaded your lecture notes on the basic spectrum, the uh, web browsing spectrum. So, what you can ask your students is basically download this app, and pretty much they can download every single thing that you have uploaded. If not, they don't need to have internet access.
Right, so um, that is an example. Let's move on to the event browser. So, Spectrum, it's, it's the normal address. So, Spectrum, the event that you don't mind. Okay, if you want to download it, you can just do it now and you can stop me at any time. Okay, so, if you just take out your mobile phone, go to your app store, uh, find uh, Moodle. Okay, the Moodle app is The Moodle app logo is there. Okay, so that is the shape of the Moodle logo. So you just go and key in HTTPS um, double dot forward slash spectrum that you have in your mind, and then you should be able to get a list of this. Okay, something like this. And then just click on connect to your site. Then it will ask you to log in. Okay, so once you log in, then you should be able to connect back. Go around um, the Moodle app a little bit. No, it's two different things. Yeah. So if you click on the Moodle on the UM Touch, you will also transfer, uh, well, it's kind of like you will transfer it to a different site when you just click it. So it's the same thing. Yes. Okay. So um, this is just to introduce you guys a little bit on the Moodle app. If you want to use it, then by all means, uh, go and explore a little bit and see what you can, uh, what else you can do with it. Okay. So now let's move on to the main one. This is where um, you definitely need to log in. Uh, you guys still want to try to download the Moodle app? You can wait, no problem. We have about three hours um, for you guys to kind of like get custom a little bit. Because Spectrum has a lot of features and definitely within three hours I cannot tell where it's going to be. Okay? So that's why we normally have uh, quite a Spectrum training. If you see you know, in your email, there's always Spectrum training, you know, uh, email that always fulfill um, your inbox, then um, yeah, that's, that's what we do. So basically, if you have any issues with um, anything about Spectrum, for example, then you can actually uh, register yourself with or into the spectrum clinic and by the me or the party or someone else can actually can like try and take you and try and help you solve your problem. Okay. Now if you go to your web browser, spectrum the you have the key mind, this is the basic thing that you will see. And as you can see here, there's two red dots uh, being highlighted. On the main page, these are the only two things that you need to be my slow. On the, on the front page. And you can look at the information, you can scroll down, reading all the other information, but um, it's not critical for you as an educator. It's more information, it's more connected uh, for students. Okay? So, in these two buttons, what you need to know is on the bottom, the button on the top left is basically to open a navigation bar. So, if you click on that, then you will have a navigation bar. And this is where if you um, kind of like enter spectrums and then you suddenly like lost and how do you go and get back so if the navigation bar is not open then this is where you open it it's always on the top left hand corner okay um, on the other hand on the top right is where you will see your own information so you can just click on that and then log in using your uh, Microsoft account put key your password and then sign in then what you will see is now on the top right hand side it will show your name okay. if you cannot log in then what it means is that your credential is not yet either active or fully registered into your app system okay. if you can't then please let your uh, partner or DJ know so that this can proceed because next week is already uh, okay. so let's go ahead and show you the way and pretty much that's all for navigation okay, so very basic so the, two, the only two buttons that you need to know uh, to navigate through Spectrum is that on the top left hand side which is the uh, main navigation bar and the top right is where you can get your credential okay. if you have already logged in and uh, if you click on the top right hand side there are some other features that um, I can show to you guys so if you just follow what I'm doing a little bit. Okay. 
So uh, basically, Spectrum and then can and then both. You can pretty much upload most files. Okay, so we have uh, PowerPoint, Google Document, uh, etc. etc. Excel, for example, you can upload everything. But there is a limitation on the file size. Uh, if I'm mistaken, I'm really about 10 megabytes. So something like that, that's important. But that, there is a limit. So if, say, um, you want to do a, a pre recorded lecture, right? And then you want to, you know, having an, uh, an idea of uploading the whole thing into the spectrum, you will, you will not be successful. Okay? So for you to be able to upload your pre recorded lecture, normally my practice is either you have three options. Number one, uh, obviously we use Google uh, Drive. You upload all the lectures on Google Drive, or pre recorded lecture on Google Drive, and then you can just put the link uh, on spectrum. Okay? But because we have a limitation on the drive um, file size, or not file size, the whole drive, we basically want unlimited now, we only have 30 gigabyte. So you can switch to number two, which is upload all your lecture, free for the lectures on Microsoft, because they give you one terabyte at least for now, hopefully you will not use it. Okay? And number three is for you to use the free system, either YouTube or you want to use TikTok, you know, for the many things. Be my guest. They are always put it there, and then what you need is just a link to that particular lecture, and then you just put it on spectrum. Okay? Alright. Creating groups. Now, um, you guys know how big is your class? So, anyone maybe more than 100? No? Yeah, more than 100. 160. 160. Okay. So, this might be of interest. But for the rest of you, you might not be um, that fun, but nonetheless, you can create a group, a smaller group. But for a big class, um, this is the basic question that I normally get from the inspector uh, So they always ask me how to create groups, how to create groups, how to create groups. So that's why I'm putting a creating group over here. So that is best then, you know, know that you can actually create a group on the uh, spectrum. And from there, you can just, you know, automatically create groups instead of asking your students come to the front, write down your names, choose your friends and whatnot okay. and what's in your group, for example, I've done that previously okay. so but it's tiring because they want to empty you we need to open to us and we need to record it somewhere right? so you can just create the inspector which is way, way easier so how do you do that? so there's two ways of doing this one, um, the, the naming system is what I named it so there's no, if you search inspector Post group, you, you will not find it. Okay? So, this is what I like to name it because pretty much you, as the educator, you can force them into groups. Okay? So, this is why I mean by post group. So, they don't have any chance to, you know, touching, touching and their friends to you know, make a group together. So, you force them, you will be, for example. Okay? And second one is self intro. So, this is more of a free um, group thingy where you have. And just put it there, and then your student will self enroll themselves into the groups, and then you can just take the information out so that you can have a record of the group. Okay. So, the first group, how do you do it? So, number one is, which is very important, and um, I think most of people forget, is first you need to create an empty group. Okay. So, without creating an empty group, you cannot force them into groups, or you cannot ask them to start and roll themselves into groups. So first is to create an empty group. And how do you do that? Well again, go into spectrum. You know, um, and number one, the one of okay. So number one is always the learning thing. And then number two is where you click on the participants. So that's why the navigation bar on the top left hand side is very important. Okay, because you're going to use the box, especially if you want to use each of the spectrum. So you turn on anything, click on the participants, and then what you see is you will move into a different page, okay? so uh, the participant page, and then click on the gear button on the right hand side somewhere in the middle, okay? and then there will be some uh, small menus, and underneath there, there's groups. So if you click on groups, what you will see is you will see this. Okay? So um, it says that edX01 groups because I am in edX. Um, Page. Okay. So participant first. Okay, and then click on the gear button. 
Yes. Okay. And then uh, go into uh, groups. Okay. So here buttons and then groups. Everybody flowing? You are trying? Yes. Okay. Time it. Okay. So from there, first thing that you can do is to create a group. Okay. So this is where you create a group. This is the kind of like slightly longer way. Uh, of course, you can see down there how to create groups. Uh, I'm not going to touch on other great groups because it's so easy. You just click on that, change a few settings, and then voila, it will automatically do it for you. But uh, I'm going to show you guys on how to create your own groups. Okay. So if you click on create group, what will happen is you ask for a group name, group ID, and group description. You can just hit on.
as long as you have three media group, or even if you have not three media group, you can actually use the other group. Okay, so that's why I say exploit on your own. Um, well, perhaps I can show it to you guys. 950, you say that? Well, okay, let's go. So if you go to participants, um, my class.
previous only here students then nothing will happen okay so you need to know who they are so that you can set the quality okay so I'll just put their students seven member from the cohort so there's two cohorts here respondents and respondents lecturers I'll just put it there any so that you'll select everything select them from grouping um, so this is the grouping of grouping that I mentioned it's in the second group um, where you can actually group them into different groups and then that group can have different groups so group in group like I said in the second group in my group so um, set a group member from I'll just put none so none what none means here is that you select everyone if you select say um, spectrum in February then you will select all you will kind of like uh, a smaller section where perhaps you have when you're talking about student you have students then it will be everyone but you, when you say you have students from faculty of science for example then it means you have students they are still you have students but they are from faculty of science so similarly what happened here is that select members from cohort you can put any cohort meaning that it will include everyone and then select members from grouping you want to select a subgroup of that particular group okay? So we'll just put none over there. Um, same thing for here, if you have created the smaller groups, and then the smaller groups is still large enough, then you might want to make it even smaller. Especially if you are teaching uh, faculty courses, for example, where your group might be like very huge. So you might want to group that into smaller groups and faculty, and then you want to group it again into a small smaller group. Okay, so these are the features. But these are more on um, you to see what's the, what you, you can do because I am not teaching kind of courses so I can show you that I'll show you video, right? but this is one way for you to actually do it okay. and allocate member so this is where you can force them either randomly uh, put it in an alphabetical uh, order so say for example you know Ahmad and Zanaria is a very close friend and you want to split them then you can always use alphabetical first name and last name um, and Okay. Or you can just also do it randomly using ID number. Okay, because all students have their own ID, so you can just do this. Um, and they are. Okay. So ignore users in group means that you will just do my side if you want. So regardless of whether you have grouped them or not, you will just ignore it. So some students, if you choose to ignore students in groups, some students will maybe. Just one group they will be. So it's up to you uh, whether you want to put it or not. And definitely, if you have students, uh, say for example, if you are teaching about economics, right, and then you have a student, uh, your PhD students, for example, wants to join your class, and of course, if he or she wants to join your class, you might want to include all um, resources so that the student can also access. If you're teaching courses, so you can actually add them as long as they are active students, you can actually add them manually to your group, to your respective group. Okay, so you just need to find the names um, under participant uh, and then add, add them to your page. And then from here, you can uh, choose whether to include only active enrollment, meaning that it's only students that is enrolled. So now, if you click on that, your PhD student will not be in, the, in that auto generated groups. Okay. So you can preview first. Oh. Um, count, say, you know, one, two per group. Okay. And then preview. So what you can you will see is okay. So what you see now is NFT with these people, NFT with these people and because I want only two groups okay so if I want to have say 10 groups then now we go and go and preview then you can see there will be 10 groups now okay so if for example in your case you have 160 students and then you want to have say 10 groups so you have 16 per group and then you can generate this and then this is what the groups will be and you can display this uh, so that you still can actually know which group they are in. Okay. Alright. Um, 
that's it for me. Any question? Then if you click on that one, 
Okay, then you guys just go and select the two groups. Okay, over here in this project, there's already a pre created four groups. So if you select the only the two groups, then uh, once you save and return to the course, on that and what you will see is everything. Okay. Okay, so if you will see everything, you can be go and do a live demonstration. Now, so this is one by the group, group in group. So we have on the top left groups, uh, the middle is groupings. Um, so group is normally the small ones and if you go to overview then you can actually see what are the real groups available. Okay. Now let me show you how to self-enroll in groups. Okay. Go to your spectrum page as usual, turn on everything. Go to a place where you see add an activity or resources, like that. Okay. Click on that, group choice, and then leave it there. Steven to Steven now. Okay. Um, and then, okay, so these are the features uh, that you can either do not publish your student's result at all, so nobody can see anything, or show results to students on the before they know who belongs to the same group. Okay. Or show results to students only after choice is closed. So you can put the time to say, for example, during your first week of lecture, you can tell the students, please enroll yourself in one of these groups by the end of today, for example. So you can actually put the settings so that the polling or self enrollment opens now until the end of the day. So there are some features that um, are available on Spectrum that you can play around and try and see what you do. Okay. So privacy results, um, publish and the results, not sure to the names or publish everything and sort of the know everything. Okay. Now a lot of choice to be updated, uh, meaning that you know either allow your students to jump between groups. Okay, now we have already a couple of party, so perhaps you don't want the students to also jump groups. Because I'm used for an answer, you just give it, uh, give, give it the number. Okay. So, especially if you have 160 students, you don't want 150 students in the same group. It is no point of having a grouping. So, of course, if you put something like 10 over here, then what will happen is each group can only have 10 students. One is full, then student can only jump to a different group. Okay. And then groups. Okay. So we can go and select everything. So this is where uh, you can set the time where the students need to enroll themselves within a certain period. So you can say you straight open today until say Level 9, 9, so this is the time where the student can enroll. Okay, so it's a basic setup about the time restriction. There are also restriction access over here, but I'm not going to touch about it. You can say if I have 5 groups, right? If I set 5 groups, and I want 5 students in 3 groups and 4 students each in the group. Oh, that's a tough one. I don't think we, oh, well. Because if we have an uneven, uneven number of students, like 47, for example. Right. We can't have extra numbers, right? But there's, there's always a limit on, um, you can force them. So once they have enrolled, you can force them, move them um, to a different group, if you want. Or you can just tell them, uh, make sure that each group, <coughs> only three groups will have this number, the other group will have this number. So hopefully the student will listen to your instruction and then follow what you want them. Otherwise, we'll just force them to move to the group. Yeah. Okay, so that one is easy in access. Um, in competition tracking, so they can use any amount that you just completed. That one is important. Thank <laughs> you. 
slides, then you're going to try on your own, then we're going to take about 15 minutes break before we continue on the second uh, objective. Okay. So, page settings, how do you go to page settings is... Probably just use the live session. Okay. So, if you go into your, um, your pause page, okay, you can click on this gear button on top right hand side corner and then you go and click on edit settings okay. so that one over there okay. so go into your page again on the navigation on the top right left hand side um, and then click on the gear button over here okay, on the top right hand side and then edit settings now, um, previously, if you can recall, my course has a full list of items, right? So everything is uh, meant up to be in a um, like web browsing, general web browsing, where you go from top to the bottom. So what you can do over here is change course format, okay? so that you can, instead of students having to go from top to the bottom to try and find a course, you can change it to, for example, a grid function. Okay, so there's a few settings that you can play around. And save and display. And what the student will see is a grid format. Okay, a grid format like that. So, um, of course, now it's blank because you, need, you can edit. So, mm -hmm. change image. You can. Oh, maybe the buttons because I'm using an iPad. So you can actually add an image per uh, topic. Okay, so each individual box there is a topic. So previously the topic is set, set so that you go from top to the bottom. Now it goes in a grid fashion. Okay, so this is especially when you say for example um, when you are preparing your teaching um, resources, you plan it to a weekly basis. So week 1 until week 14. So instead of students having to you know, scroll from top to the bottom, you might want to put it in a grid format like this so that the student Let's see how the student
know how to edit it now. Okay, so there's only two buttons. On the top, front and side, on the top, back and side. Okay, and a few things on the page settings, especially on changing how your page will be. Special page will be like. Okay, so we have a break for 15 minutes. My arm is killing me. Um, then we'll continue afterwards. We look at a bit on freeze, with the silence, and then you can see over there. Click on it. Um, edit settings, or you can just skip and enter first. I will show you the game afterwards. It's just a, a, a quick one. And then click on add session. Okay, and over here you can see the day. Um, you can change it to whatever day um, that you have your lectures on. Okay, and over there you can also see multiple sessions. Okay, so meaning that if you want to do it like Say maybe every Monday, Tuesday, or you have like uh, every day, you just click, click on it. Um, you can click on repeat every one week or two weeks, uh, depending on how you choose it. And then repeat until so in this case, um, I'm choosing repeat until the end of the semester. Okay, so you can just prepare this once, um, and then you know that's it. Now, so the most important thing is you can either allow students to self check themselves or you will do it okay so um, it's up to you on how you want to do it and then once you have that then you will see all the uh, sessions are automatically um, created for you over here okay so uh, if you recall a little bit on the video what i did was i straight away choose uh, eight weeks so uh, eight weeks so seven weeks uh, but what it is showing is
Okay. You can create an attendance for um, your partner as well because Spectrum is being shared with you and your partner. But uh, if you want to create an attendance for your partner, be sure that he or she knows that you have created this. So that there won't be you know, two people creating the same thing and then so they get confused and then because the other day nobody um, you know, signed in to neither of the modules that you set up. Okay, and because you're free, then you'll be in you know, big trouble for you. You just do uh, weekly and then wait <coughs> until, so it depends on um, how many weeks. So say for example, if you, if you are going to teach for the next 40 weeks, then you just go and update 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, so 15. Okay, so 15 weeks. Uh, because one week is a semester break, so I'll just type that 16 weeks. Okay. And now this is a feature where you either allow your students to self-teach themselves as and then, or if you don't select this, it means that you need to be fully good. Okay. Uh, so I would recommend this, you know, just allow them to do it. Um, okay. And um, automatic marking over here says that um, if yes, student will be automatically marked depending on their first access to the course. Um, so you <coughs> can uh, put this as yes. Okay. So what will happen is your student must open Spectrum in this particular page before they can uh, sign in for their attendance. So at least they, you know that they've already opened Spectrum. Um, and whether they download it or look at your edge notes or whatever that you then you prepare. It's a different story, but at least they have opening. Okay, if they don't open the spectrum, then they can't simply ask their friends to, you know, help me and teach me as uh, a okay. okay, So this is where it fits to the student username. Okay, so it's up to you. Uh, but for me, I'm being more laid back. So it doesn't matter whether the students doesn't come to my lecture, but if they fail, then they'll be in trouble. Simple as that. Password, you don't have to set a password, but you can if you want. Okay. Um, I click on more, right in the website, it's just going to open as well. Okay. So that's it for the general settings. So you can click on add. And when you move back to the session, you should be able to see. Okay. 
okay, so that's the read part over here and export so you can export uh, if you export it will be like a, an Excel file where you, you can edit you know, not if you want to edit or you can just use a report and you will just report on uh, seeing the, whether this person has attended this and that okay. Uh, let me go back. I wanted to say something. Okay. So, oh yes, I want to change to the student's mode so that you can see what the student will, will see. Okay, so if you want to have that limitation, you can. 
But if you want to you know, just let the student do whatever they want, um, then you don't have to use this uh, restriction. Uh. Okay? But otherwise, it's there. Um, this is where you can actually set. And if you return to course, No, for the big one. Okay, so the restriction will be on here. You can see here now, the restriction says restricted, not available unless you belong to group A, and then um, it's on uh, the, after this day. That's from this day until this day. So say for example, you put in there from this one and then you um, end until today at say 1. So this is the only time where they can actually access. Um, you can go in, in two, so that is another limitation <laughs> that you can set. So this is for general. So normally general is when you have two groups, right? So you want to have um, a big general um, setup so that you can put in attendance um, restriction, attendance settings on group A instead of group B, and stuff like that. But to add in, yeah. okay, to, in to add in a second limitation, so you should be able to do it here. If it's here, it's not here. Um, I think time. So, so it will be limited to this time. This time over here. So, if you look at the back, to the sessions that you have created, right? So, the session has a date and a time. So, it will be based on this date and time. They can open, but they cannot click anything. Yeah, so they can only click during that time. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. So if you say, put it at like, um, so say for example, you know that some students will be a bit late, so hopefully you can open your attendance perhaps five minutes before the lecture starts, and then maybe ten minutes after the lecture ends, so that you know there there won't be any student. Um, that comes to you and then say, I haven't uh, um, signed for it, my attendance, but the system has already locked me out. So, can you please open it for me so there will be more work for you? So, just give a bit of time so that there will be enough time for students to actually come in and um, click on the attend button. <coughs> Alright, so so far it's clear. Any other questions? Alright, now, um, limitation is done. The next one is for me to show you how to put the QR of your tenants. So again, we move back to our main page. Okay? But to prepare this QR, you need to make sure that you have prepared the attendance um, session just now. Okay? If you have not prepared any sessions, then the, the auto QR code will not work. So once you have your attendance um, like this ready with the session, what you do is you go on the live uh, navigation panel at the very bottom. There is a button saying add a block. Okay, click on add a block button. And then there, there will be like more things to do. You can scroll down until you see QR code attendance. Yeah, okay, QR code attendance. Oh, because you haven't set your sessions. So remember I said, um, this feature, the QR code attendance is only available once you have created attendance, attendance block just now, and then you have created sessions inside that. Have you created that? 
Yes, but you can see this. Can you click on the attendance? It's a here's a there, okay. Um, on the left hand side, just scroll down to the bottom and look. Scroll down until. Oh, what happened? <coughs> No, no, no. Um, you are as the instructor, so you do, you do not have to add in your name. But that one is without auto. Uh, probably your partner has already created that one. Okay. Anyone else have this system? Huh? Again? Okay. So once you have created your attendance like this, okay, your attendance. Um, activity and then you have created sessions make sure you check the sessions are uh, this year not last year okay oh. because because you're yeah. mm -hmm. Students to download UM Touch and then just scan it using UM Touch. 
but you actually can scale using anything, but you know you can just promote your touch app. Yeah, so ask the service to download your touch app and then scan it using your touch. So either is fine. Okay? Alright, so um, and if you can see here, the dates are the you the, the only thing that you need to do is you need to manually change it every week in terms of the attendance uh, QR. Okay? So and you can see here this is for next year, this is for my last session. So we need to change it. If we can always find the gear button, configure, okay, and then change it to the attendance session that you want. So instead of first at the top, last at the bottom, so they tweak, I don't know why, but um, it's like that. So we just <laughs> do it on the first session, uh, save, and then the QR will be automatically regenerated and you can use this for your lectures. Okay, so let me repeat again. So you, once you have your QR code attendance block, okay, click on the gear button over okay, here. Okay, on the top right hand side corner. So the gear button is specific for your QR code attendance, not that gear. Okay, so this gear is for that, that gear is for the whole thing. So the gear button on the QR code attendance, and then configure. And then if you scroll down a little bit, you'll see that attendance session. And then you can choose the attendance session. Okay? Alright. I think that is all for attendance. Um, so you can always just uh, to recap it again. So once uh, the session ends, you always get go to report. Okay, you can print this report as your student attendance. Okay? Or you can export the whole thing if you want to uh, do something else. Like say you want to do an auto count on how many students attended in this session or that session. So you can you can always export it first. Um, and then okay, select all sessions, then you can export it into Excel format. So that you can do whatever you want with Excel. Okay? Alright. Uh, last thing that I want to show you guys <coughs> for this session is now uh, I'm not sure whether you guys still want to do it, but um, say for example previously during uh, MCO normally we would create our own WhatsApp group, right? For each course they would have one their own WhatsApp group. So um, this is just before because next. Next week is the first uh, week of the semester. So say for example, if you have already created a WhatsApp group, uh, but you do not know and you don't want to have like blast um, to everyone that you know we have a WhatsApp group for this course, but only some or part of it, part of your students are actually um, taking your course. So what you can do is you can prepare a QR code for that particular link for for your WhatsApp group. Okay. And what you can do is again navigation at the very bottom and lock. You can scroll down until you see HTML. Okay, click on HTML. So HTML block is over there. Then once you edit the HTML block, you can change the name and you can display it like this. So this is my course. Um, if you scan on this, then you will join the course. Pretty much, but this is for all the students. Okay, so you can create your own WhatsApp group. You can just put the QR code for your WhatsApp group on Spectrum, so students will, you know, see that and then they will want to join. So you don't have to do anything. So you just create the group, put the QR code in, and then the student will just join on their own without even you telling them, please join, please join. So you know, it's it's one easy way to do it. Uh, this is how I've been practicing since 2020 um, so you know I don't have to tell my students please join WhatsApp group um, they will just join it so any information that you want to you know, tell them will be very quick and um, you know, WhatsApp group you can have a lot of things there you can have a discussion among students and whatnot okay yes so so if you have a
Uh, if you use Telegram, um, you created a Telegram group. What you need is just the web address to access the Telegram. Okay, and then what you do, say for example, um, say say for example, this this web address is my WhatsApp or Telegram code to enter the group. So what you do is you go and Google QR code generator. Okay. Just click on like, like the first one, and then take the second one. Okay, and then you paste it, and then easily you can get a QR code. So you just get the QR code, copy, and then paste it into your uh, spectrum. Okay, and I know WhatsApp um, has a feature where it will auto generate the QR code for you, so you can use that one as well. So up to you, whichever is easier for you. But this is just to show that you can create this uh, QR. Okay, you download it, for example. Okay, and then you go back to your post. So say, for example, this is the new block that I've created just now. So just go click and gear button, configure. Okay, and then you can name your block title, say, what? So I already have a WhatsApp. Telegram. That's the example. Okay, and then this is where you paste your QR code. Oops. Wrong. You need to take the QR code. Put it in. Okay, now you have a QR code with them, very huge. Um, then you can also write something. This is. This is an example. Full stop. Okay, save changes. Then what you will see now is Telegram test, the QR code, and whatever text that you put in. Okay. So pretty much this feature can be used for anything. Um, but myself, I just use it for my WhatsApp group. Uh, but if you have, if you want to put in um, other resources, for example, you want to put a YouTube link for uh, their self learning and whatnot. You can put it in. For the product of the Telegram, you just create a group first. Yep. And then you, how do you change the video? So, uh, normally there's a link where you can uh, click on share group, share group or something. I don't know if you can do it on WhatsApp or Telegram. I'm not a vivid user of Telegram. Uh, but okay, so, right. so for example, if you already have it, So we need to have a group first. Okay. Um, Telegram or Telegram. So probably it's not under web browsing. You need to get the share button from your phone. Settings. Normally it's on the no no it's in the group.
So you can easily be online like this, or you can be a manual. Uh, it's, it's up to you. Um, I would prefer just do it like this, or you can be an alternative. Uh, previously, I did not use the spectrum attendance. What I did was everybody knows um, Google Form, so you can just create a Google Form, uh, re take a record, and then but because I do know a little bit of um, Google Sheet coding language, so I transfer from a normal attendance from Google Form into uh, like a full attendance, you know, a table type attendance. Yeah, but you know, that is easier if you know how what you're doing. Otherwise, um, this spectrum attendance is more than sufficient. Okay, is the food here yet? No. <laughs> okay, right. Um, I think that is all for attendance. Um, give me a few seconds, I need to delete this so that my student will not get confused. Okay, and the general advice is for you to only delete what you have created on spectrum. Okay, um, don't delete anything that you did not create to avoid problems. Um, problems in terms of the system itself, like for example, if you deleted a group um, where all the students belonging, you deleted that group, then all the students will be kicked out. So that is one problem, systemic problem. The second one is you don't want to create a problem with your colleagues. If you are sharing groups, right? You are, you are sharing um, a course with your partner. The, whatever you do on your spectrum will also be seen and can also be changed by your partner as well. So you don't want to delete what your partner has done and of course you don't want your partner to delete what you have done. So for general things like for example um, attendance, it's best to always discuss with your partner first um, whether he or she wants to use spectrum attendance or not. If that person says yes, then you can create for both sessions, for example. <coughs> or if the person says he or he or she doesn't want to use Spectrum, then be my guess, it's all yours, do whatever you want. Okay? Alright, so I think that is all for attendance. Any question? Last question before we move on to something else? Tak ada Okay. Let's move on to... Alright, so by the way, if you want to go to the loo, it's over that side and it's very far back. Uh, so sorry, sorry, this is like a retrospective question. Mm -hmm. um, before we get this topic, much like um, biochem, about the like, uh, cost code, right? We actually, we don't have the, you know, the power to you know, create something like our own page on the spectrum? No. Okay. You can't need to talk to Umu. <laughs> <laughs> It's like with a different platform. Yes. And normally we don't touch Spectrum and because Spectrum there's a lot of automation. Um, like, and of course, PTM doesn't like us to kind of like touch what they have prepared. Um, so we can always request, but the answer that you will get is always no. So that's why we normally use a different platform. Especially, say, um, if you want to organize something that is under teaching and learning, for example. So you can always come to a lab ask for help um, to create you know something that you something similar to spectrum that you can use for everyone. Okay, so we do have that at Trium for example. Um, so Atrium is a platform with also based on Moodle and it's similar to Spectrum but we use it mainly for uh, things that are other than um, basic teaching and learning with your undergrad. Okay, so say for example, once you have gone through um, Emerald Teaching and Learning by Adam, if you, if anyone of you have gone through Emerald, ada tak? So we have one. Macam dah. Macam dah. Macam dah. Itu semua online kan? Ha. Online? Ya, tak, tak. Online yang, tapi I don't know what's the effect of it. Si betul saya cakap hari tu Itu uh, itu, online dia ada member tak, tak beneficial okay, yeah, okay, So, if you go through Emerald, then um, you have gone through uh, Atrium okay? So, as you can see, it, it is very similar to Spectrum okay? But what we use here is for, say for example, for Emerald um, We have 
chapter financial analysis by his, I'm not sure which faculty is this. So you, you can also create this uh, if you want to use something similar on spectrum uh, format. Okay. So the thing about Dalia Nabulan, for example, um, chemical safety laboratory. So this is what um, my department have used for our safety training. Okay, design Islam, I'm sure API is doing that. Okay, design instruction, uh, so I don't know, maybe this one is not like that. Okay, alright, any other questions? Before we move to assessment? Okay, no? Alright. So, assessment, let me see, where was I? Assessment groups. So the assessment is also um, so two type of assessment. The general assessment that uh, we normally use is number one quiz, number two is written assignment, and of course number three. Once you have done these two, how do you retrieve your data from Spectrum? Okay, so this is if you do it on Spectrum. You can use it um, via different platform. For example, uh, for quiz, um, you can use. Say Google Form, or we can use Microsoft Forms. Um, what else? Um, SurveyMonkey, you cannot use that one, that one is for surveys, but there, there are a few other uh, alternative ways by which you can just simply conduct um, a quiz, or you can just use a simply the old fashioned pen and paper. Okay, uh, it's up to you. Anyhow, um, so the quiz ones. Um, why is it here? Um, so please ignore the self and roll groups on the top left. Okay. So again, um, to prepare your um, quiz, the first off, you go to your main page, you turn on editing, it's always the first step. And then the second step now is for you to click on the add an activity or resource button. Okay, and then you have these two over here. Okay, you can add that. Um, have a quiz or terminate assignment. Okay, so that is the most basic ones. You can use more advanced features, for example, um, you can see there interactive content on the top right hand corner, uh, top um, right from quiz. Okay, so there's um, interactive content, that one is stage 5P, this one is more advanced thing, but you can also use quiz inside there. Um, what else can you use over here? Um, you can use assignment on the top left hand corner. Okay, you can use assignment also, but that one is just more on you know a platform by which the student can submit their assignments. So you can either use that one, or if you are accustomed to Google Form, you can always set a link so that student will go to Google Form and submit their assignments there. So it's up to you. Um, in my case, because during MCO, I've prepared a lot of uh, Google Forms, so I normally just reuse my Google Form instead of creating a new one. Okay, so we need to go to last session because it is very long and I don't want to, and because I prepared this yesterday. So I don't have enough time to actually prepare everything. Alright, so last session, I mean, move back, I will move back to Spectrum first. Okay, um, go to my course and again number one, turn on editing. Alright, so um, if you want to do a quiz on Spectrum, there are two ways by which you can do it. Number one is where you already have your um, question bank, uh, whether it's a hard printed or if you have it in a format that Spectrum can read, especially if you have used Moodle platform before, if you have taught in a different university, you, you already, um, and that university uses Moodle as a platform, you have prepared the question bank on that particular Moodle, you can actually extract from that Moodle into our UN uh, Spectrum platform and then just reuse your questions. That's one way to do it. Or number, number two is where uh, if you think that you'll be teaching this course or whatever course that you have, uh, for the next, say, five years, you can create a question bank for that particular course on Spectrum and then you can just, you know, ask Spectrum to randomly generate all the questions per semester, for example. Okay? 
So in general, what you do is uh, once you have clicked on editing, add activity or resources as per my um, PowerPoint just now or keynote. Okay, so you add in quiz one, for example. Okay, you can put why is quiz quiz. Okay, um, and of course over here you can put a timing. So timing means that the student will not be able to access. Wait, that one is restriction. So timing is start their time. So they can click on the button, but they cannot start the quiz. Okay. So the restric the restriction down here. Okay, the restriction access down here is when the student cannot even click on the quiz link. Okay, uh, let me just show you generally. So I've already created quiz one. Okay, save return to course. So I'll tell you the difference between timing and restriction. So now the quiz is here, is here right? So um, restriction is when the student cannot click on the link at all. Okay, so that is if you have a restriction. But for timing is when the student can enter this page, the quiz page, but they cannot click on start taking the quiz. Okay, I will show you once I've created. Uh, okay, now we created the quiz activity. Okay, and then once I'll just repeat again. You have created the quiz activity using the activity button down here. Okay, that's when you can see this quiz one um, icon to prepare for the questions you need to enter the quiz one and then you can click on edit quiz okay or if you have a question bank then um, first off you still need to edit quiz and then you can uh, add in from your question bank okay so when you click on edit quiz this is what you will see a blank a maximum grade save and one mark um, and what you can do is you can click on the add button over here a new question Question, uh, from question bank or a random question. Okay, so if you have uh, or if you think that you're gonna teach the, this the same course for the next few <coughs> times, few semesters, then you can just simply create the question bank um, and you know just pull out the question from the bank itself. It will be easier. Uh, but alternatively, you can just create your own questions now and then do a little bit of hard work to export all the questions and then input it back and then reuse it for the next question. You can also do that. So it's up to you, whichever is, um, you think is easier for you. Um, to say for example, we just create a new question. So these are all the options that you can do. Okay? Um, you can do multiple choice, you know, like high school type, true or false, um, also high school type, matching. So this is when it goes back to what? If say you are teaching about theories, a lot of theories, and then you want to simply match it to the name, who says this and that, for example. Normally we don't do that, but just for example, then you can use the matching feature. If you want to uh, do in a paragraph format, for example, uh, a certain topic about economy, for example, economy is whatever it is, uh, it is coined by someone, someone, someone in whatever year, and the economy in the US generated something trillion dollars, for example. And then you want to create a, a space where, um, no, the space is somewhere else, sorry. I think the space is a bit down. Um, but where the student needs to put in information, okay, to complete the whole paragraph, for example. You can use that one. Okay, so a short answer can be that. Numerical is where you want to key in numerical values in, on a paragraph or even in a sentence. Um, essay is a full length essay, but normally for essays we don't use spectrum normally. Uh, if you are a mathematician or your question involves mathematics, you can use mathematics here. Okay, calculated multi choice is also there. Drag and drop text. Uh, for example, if you want to make it easier for the students, you create a paragraph and then you can select some of the uh, key points from the paragraph so that students can miss and, miss and match. You can do a drag and drop, uh, more like uh, you know, uh, miss and match thing, as do and then answers. So there are multiple things that you can do. Okay. 
Okay, so let's do the info, sick, easy thing, multiple choice. You can click on add. So question in, question one, for example, okay, question text, what is my name? Okay, default mark, it's up to you because this is a very difficult question and I'm going to put 10 marks. Okay, one or multiple answers, you can select multiple if you want, um, or one answer, so um, sometimes I do choose multiple answers just to make sure the student know what they are doing. It's very difficult, but you know, um, that's the choice. Okay, you can shuffle the choices. So what this means is not um, simply switch, switch A to B, B to A, or, or C to E and whatnot. So what it means is all students will have a different arrangement of the answers. They will still have the same answer, but they will have a different arrangement. So uh, these are the features that you know if you are going, if you end be going into um, online uh, examination and whatnot. These are the features that will help you in terms of if students want to discuss in a backdoor WhatsApp group. Question one A, for example. So if you do a shuffle, then definitely A for a person is not the same for another person. Okay. Um, choices is up to you. Numbering and whatnot. Um, Send instruction if you want to. So these are the answers. My name is um, Hadi or to write the all, but it doesn't come up. Okay. Or oh. Satir. Or oh. perhaps Mu. Okay. And you can have more, more than four choices. You can have um, eight choices if you want. So, um, you know, normally people say, oh, multiple choice is so high school. But if you have eight different choices, then it's no longer high school. Okay, um, and then for my feedback, multiple tries. So this is up to you. Uh, if you want, if you want to allow your students to have multiple tries, you can, and perhaps you want to penalize that as well, so that the, the, the students will not you know, just randomly throw out a dice and then say what, one is A, so they choose A and then suddenly it's wrong, and then because they know A now is wrong, then they have uh, a high chance to get the right answer. So you can. Penalize if you want. Okay, um, so you can also put a hint. Uh, normally, you don't want to unless if this is a continuous assessment. Then perhaps you want to, you know, allow students to uh, recall what they have learned in the lecture. So you can put a hint. For example, refer to the beginning of the lecture. For example. So once the student um, get their first answer wrong, then him will pop up. Okay. So hint number two, perhaps you can put it in the same thing, but um, put it in a slightly more specific. So say for example, hint number one, just refer to the beginning of the lecture. Hint number two, please see the recording at five minutes, for example. Okay. And then save. So what you will see now is. Great, 100%. Okay. So you need to always have one of the answer as 100%. So say for example, uh, because Leon comes from the same department, if you choose Leon, then I'm going to give you 20%. Okay, everyone else is zero because I'm not the ladies. Okay. So save. Right now, the question will pop up. Okay, like that. So the more question that you have, that you have everything here. Okay, and uh, remember just now I mentioned that you can shuffle your answers A, B, C, and D, right? Over here, there's another shuffle. What it does is shuffle the question number. So now, not only the student A will not get the same question um, number one, so uh, but they will see as number one, but the reality is not number one. Okay, so it will be more difficult for them to discuss um, and to uh, you know discuss it without you. Discussing with you is okay, but without you is not okay. Okay, so you can just do a shuffle, then you will shuffle the questions and the answers. 
Alright, so we can save that and then let me go back to the course page, switch my role to student. Okay, enter the quiz. And then just attempt quiz now. So if you set a time, the attempt button is not there. Okay, so that's the difference between timing and restriction. So restriction meaning that the students cannot even go to the attempt page, attempt page, um, but the timing is when the student cannot enter this question, they cannot see this question. Okay, now you can see just now I put my name as A and then Leong B and then um, Zatir and Omo, but now it's um, shuffled. Okay, so my name there, finish attempt. Okay, as a student, you will not get to know whether you got it right or wrong. Okay, before we go to the last thing, any question about setting up questions? No? Right. So once you have a student attempted for your um, quiz, okay, so move back to the main page, move back to my normal role. Okay. Turn on editing. That's the first thing that you do, even though you're not editing anything. Um, my internet is a bit slow. Be patient. At least the students have enrolled, right? If they have not enrolled, then it will be more problem. Okay, so um, to see what, uh, to, to get all the answers, the marks, for example, okay? So you can go to your main page, the gear, the only gear on the top right hand corner and then you can go to grade book setup okay so all assessments that you are doing it will be in this same um, link the grade book setup okay so if you go here you scroll down where was it quiz one okay at the very bottom okay quiz one is there if you click on that you can actually see show report then you can see Oh, someone did that, and then they get full mark. Okay, and um, where is it? Quiz, quiz. I think because students are not here, so I cannot download. So normally you can let me see if, if I can find it. You should be able to download all the results and then um, keep it so that you can upload it back into your course file. only a quiz for example or under view you should be able to export just that thing let me see user report wait this is user I'll be calling sorry the the navigation in spectrum is a bit um, haywire and confusing so sometimes it's best to just go back to the main page Alright, so there is the grid or the go, grid report. <coughs> report, report, report. This one says check the settings. Hey, wait, it's the double button. I can find it now. Um, that one is just the setup. So, um, most case scenario, if you cannot find it, just find the export button and then you can uh, take all of these and just export the quiz. Okay, download, download, quiz, will be fine. Let me see if I can open it on my iPad. Now you should be able to see the 
Where's the box? Why is the box not here? Uh, it should be there. Okay, but it's not here. For now, for whatever reason, I have no idea why. But it should be there. I should get 10 marks already. Okay? So that's how you export the quiz information or any other
Okay. Okay. Thank you. So this is just to show you the uh, online version for Turnitin. Okay. If you already have an, an account from ETF, thank you library. Even though they they helped me last time. <laughs> uh, why why did I go to library? Because if you try and Google Turnitin account, you have um, you, you might be able to find a file, a documentation on how you want to, how you can access and inside the document says contact library so that's why I got the library last time <laughs> okay, so nowadays everything is you have a desk and the PDM thank you okay, so this is what you will see um, so just now I have one in account for my course SID2004 then you can see it's there and it says there model TT so it's actually linked to our spectrum, uh, which is model. So if you have five courses, for example, and all five courses are using the in, that will stay all five over here. So it'll be easier for you to just you know, switch between um, courses instead of um, in such spectrum you need to click one by one. Okay? And um, in my case, I also use uh, personally for publication check. So this is not just for me. Um, this is also, say for example, if you are um, an examiner for a CE, for example, a candidate defense or proposal defense, and normally you have a document, right? So you just take the document, put it in, and check. Okay? And you can see here, one of my students actually had similarity of 100%. Uh, there is nothing to be worried about. That is because um, she has submitted it into an archive. Uh, system and then when I recheck it, it's 100%. Uh, but you can also see some things, uh, manual 64% and whatnot. So it is a very uh, easy way to check, uh, especially for the sectors where we need to have like, you know, publish papers. Alright, move back to Spectrum. Okay, turning in. I will, even though I already have a turning in here, I'll just show you how to set it up quickly. So you can just write whatever name is there because again this is just um, naming a general name. Okay, so submission type, any submission or file upload, text submission is up to you. So normally I'll just put uh, file upload. So why file upload instead of text submission? It is because when we want to do uh, post file at the end of the semester, you need to keep a proof of a student submission. So it's easier to you know, ask students to submit a form, a, a file format where you can download and save it on your own. Okay? So um, number of parts, just leave it one, unless if you want them to submit, like say, an introduction as a first part, and then the body as a second part, conclusion and the third part, you can put a third part there. So there will be like three different links. But normally, you know, you just turn it in as uh, a proof of submission and you just check for plagiarism so you normally just set it to 1 in file format so the biggest is 20 so at the beginning of the um, session today I mentioned that if you want to upload um, a pre-recorded lecture for example then the limitation is about 20 megabyte only okay. So, allow submission of any file type, uh, normally no. So, you can click on the question mark button, what does it mean? Uh, display similarity reports to students. This one, it depends. Um, some students, when they see that they have, um, the report says that their uh, similarity is very high, normally they will come to you and ask you, uh, take an ID submit. Okay, so it, it's up to you if, if you want to show this to students. Um, but as a learning process, normally in, in my own practice, if I were to ask students first year and second year to submit a written assi assignment, normally I will ask them to submit twice. So the first one is for them to see how bad they did in terms of a percentage of plagiarism. So if it's high, then I will normally ask them, please resubmit, otherwise I will just exclude everything that is written as uh, plagiarism. So if their yeah, submission is 10 page long and then 8 pages are uh, full similarity from a different say books or whatnot I will just mark on the 2 pages only so of course if you do that then the amount will, will go lower okay, so it, it's up to you on how you want to conduct it but uh, you can just turn it in as uh, a, you know, a platform to show that 
this is what you did, so that's why I didn't mark this. Uh, okay? Alright, so submission part one, uh, you have a start date, due date, uh, post date. Okay, uh, marks, it doesn't really matter if you have it here or not, just leave it as default because um, you have the choice to mark inside the in or um, easily you know, download all the files and mark it somewhere else. In my case, because you see, I do have a, a tablet. So what I do is normally I'll just download all the submission and then mark it in my tablet, which is faster, rather than you know waiting a four hours spectrum to load and then turn in to load one by one, which is um, normally takes longer. Okay, similarity reports. Um, allow submission after due date. Normally you put no unless if you want, uh, if you are allowing them to submit after the due date. Okay. Report generation, this is when um, student can see the report okay, meaning that they can see which part is the, the one that has the highest severity and what not okay. um, Store student paper, standard repository Sebab kita ada orang library, mesti boleh saya tanya tak? Um, Puan, Dr. Uh, Puan Nur Puan Nur Saya nak tanya ni um, Store student papers ni Okay, bila kita tekan standard repository or no repository, you mentioned just now we didn't keep archive. Okay, uh, okay. one thing I want to highlight, if you create class IDs or quarterly in Spectrum, the default is standard repository. Standard repository means every quarterly uh, uh, in archive in the US. If you save the document, exactly as it is. Uh, so if, uh, in the future, you submit a different version of the paper and updated, edited version of the paper if it's similar, it will show you the percentage how many percent? similar to a currently published content and I say published content, not just officially published content you upload it on your Facebook, it's published content people upload it on a website, it's a published content okay? and it is available for the system to search online okay um, as I mentioned again, on, on, on Spectrum, default is standard repository. On Turnitin.com, when you create a class ID, the default is no repository. So sometimes lecturer confused. I use the same way to create the class. Why do I keep accidentally submitting my students' paper uh, to Turnitin? It's because if you do create it on Spectrum, automatically it will be up uh, uploaded unless you change this top student paper function. But if you create it on uh, Turnitin.com by default is actually no repository. Okay, unless you want to save, then you have to actually click on save. Uh. So if you are not planning to submit your students' paper to the Turnitin archive, please make sure when you are creating a class ID or Turnitin, please make sure you click here no repository. Uh. Because if not later on, when they use the same content for their thesis, okay, suddenly hundred percent similarity. Okay, thank you. So that is what happened to me. <laughs> yeah, so that's why my student assignment has 100% over there. Uh, just to show you guys, uh, learn from experience. Okay, uh, that experience also is a good experience. Alright, so, um, okay, so always set to no repository. That would be the best thing to do. Um, you know, because you know, it's just assignment. Um, but anyhow, even if you put it um, no repository, then um, they will always check to um, other published article. Okay, so there's no issue in, in the sense that um, you know, students I can view somewhere else lah. They can just copy from somewhere else. But one thing to note that if you are teaching the same course again and again and again and again, and then you put in no repository, what will happen is um, you know our students are very kind. Especially the seniors are very kind to the juniors, right? They will just give the exact copy of the assignment. So, it, so that is something that you need to consider. Okay, so either you will have a different sets of questions, or um, you can just step on this. Okay, so that is something that you need to figure out based on your course. All right, uh, check against paper start. It's always yes. So the default is more or less um, good enough. Okay, and um, just save and return to course. 
and you will see what happens if spectrum loads fast. Otherwise, you need to wait. Okay, there you go. Alright, so now um, test general is there, so that's my uh, turning in. Okay, so you will see this, and you should be able to see a list of students' names. And once the student has submitted, um, the, the static similarity will go under similarity over there and the um, cloud with an arrow button down there is when you can actually force upload a file for student okay? because um, I do have some problems student telling me they cannot upload their files for whatever reason, everybody else can except for one student can uh, for whatever reason, I don't know you why so I ask was it him or her? I can't remember. Um, I asked him or her to actually send the file to me and then I uh, fastly upload the file for them. Okay, so if there's an issue with the name, you can always do that. Um, you can also, once if the assignment has been submitted, you can actually um, download it from Spectrum or from the uh, website. Okay, if you have an account. But I cannot show you here because it's already everything has been deleted okay so basically that's it um, I don't have let me see if my name is there if it is then I will upload one example for you guys to see but because it's not there then I won't upload anything okay um, is it still there? I think it has been deleted We have about 10 more minutes without any press. Okay, so this is an example. Okay, once the student has submitted, um, you'll see the names, the submission title, paper ID, submitted date, similarity percentage, grade, if you want to grade it on um, turning in. Or if you don't want to, then just leave it. Normally, I, I don't. Uh, normally, I'll just print the similarity percentage as a record. Um, and you can see here one is post upload, one is download, okay, one is refresh. So um, refresh means that if you force upload um, to replace the submission, sometimes it doesn't it doesn't give you the similarity percentage straight away, it might take a few days sometimes. So you just go and press refresh so that it will refresh it for you. Okay, and um, if you have not used any before, um, you can download the file. This is an example, okay, so you can download it. So, but what you download is basically what the student has submitted. It's not a different version, it's just an identity of what the student has submitted. If you want to view and um, see the percentage similarity, just go to submission title, click on the title, then um, a turn in API will open and it will show you the document itself. And then from here, you can actually see the percentage um, similarities, where it is from. Um, you can do an exclusion and whatnot, but um, we will have another session um, specifically for the meeting. So I'm just going to skip that one. Okay. Anything else? Any questions about the meeting? One, two, three? No. Okay. So last one is about. So we have covered this session. Okay, so we have covered um, the new objective outcomes one, two, and to go on the number three. So since we don't have enough time, you can QR scan this one now to download some notes that I have prepared. Uh, not long time ago, not that long, but still long. Okay, so this note is basically um, showing you guys on like a basics way to prepare um, H5P. So this is actually a, a more advanced module. Um, H5P is a module where you can do pretty much everything that you want. You can embed videos, um, uh, lecture videos for example, and then during the lecture videos you can embed images, you can put in quiz questions to uh, get your students understanding. Um, there's, there's so many things that you can do. Okay, pretty much what you can do in Spectrum, you can do it 
in Satish 5B. So it's a very, very useful module. But uh, unfortunately, it's under usage. So um, if you like and you have a free time, you can always try and um, test it on your own. Okay? Everybody have done with this? No. Anyway, otherwise, I will um, still summarize the, the slides a little bit and uh, I will share with you and ask you to blast to everyone. Okay, so this other day you can still um, download the notes and um, see open this video. Now, uh, this is a video about page 5 p link to module done by this guy. Of course, he is not me. Uh, maybe in a few years time, but now he's not me. Um, he is one of the core developers of uh, Moodle platform, uh, specifically on h 5 p integration of h 5 p So you can view this. Because this video is about 25 minutes long, so I'm not going to play it now. Uh, but I have prepared a link by which you can just uh, scan and go to the same YouTube channel and see what you can actually do on uh, H5P. Okay? Alright. And I think that is all from me about Spectrum. And thank you. Good luck. Welcome to the end. Um, all the best in your teaching and if you have any questions um, I'm always open for you guys to contact me either through my emails um, phone or phone office phone number okay that's all thank you and have a good day